Whereas on Tuesday the 2nd of May 2023, the member for Miku South was found in breach of Standing Order 43-4. And whereas the House of Assembly, utilizing Standing Orders 43-4 and 43-6, voted to suspend the member for Miku South until, I quote, an apology to the House and the withdrawal of the offending words cited by the presiding officer were undertaken. And whereas the House of Assembly is fully satisfied that the suspension was lawful and in keeping with the standing orders, and whereas members of the House of Assembly do not wish for the constituency of Miku South to be without representation in the House of Assembly, be it resolved that the House of Assembly agrees to the lifting of the suspension without prejudice to the legal action by the member for Miku South against his suspension, and be it further resolved that the lifting of the suspension shall be effective immediately following the passage of this motion, and the, mem and the member will be at liberty to carry on his duties in service of the House and the constituency of Miku South. Mr. Speaker, as cited in the motion, it, was, it is stated that the member of Miku South was found in breach of Standing Order 43-4. And Mr. Speaker, in your preamble, you stated the conditions under which the honorable member was allowed in the House today. And it was very instructive, the words that you use, that the honorable member has taken action against this honorable house in the high court and we have agreed with the high court that we would allow him to come in pending a resolution of this matter in presenting this motion mr speaker i want us to go over what happened how it happened and how did we arrive at where we are today so i ask you mr speaker to bear with me as I go through exactly what happened and dissect why it is we found ourselves in the present situation and where do we go from here. Mr. Speaker, what did the member for Miku South see that caused such an offense, Mr. Speaker? What did he say? What led to his action constituting a breach of Standing Order 43-4? Mr. Speaker, I shall quote from a document, Mr. Speaker, and I think we can all obtain the official transcripts of the House, Mr. Speaker, but it's a document that the member himself provided elsewhere, Mr. Speaker, and I want to quote his exact words. And I want you to listen carefully, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister, that's what he said, huh? he's quoting himself, the Prime Minister would put that this reference to corruption so if we want to resolve crime in this country, Mr. Speaker, it starts in cabinet. I want those words, Mr. Speaker, to sink in. Huh? It starts in cabinet. The level of corruption of members of in your own cabinet has to be addressed. This situation is bananas. How could you have a piece of land, Mr. Speaker, that was valued in 2013 at almost 7 million and in 2021 it was revalued to be at 3.5 million and he states that you interjected when he said so of course he continues the crime situation is serious the government needs to address it in their own cabinet the prime minister keeps on playing this game that he is the big tough guy and the buck stops with him we have not seen that and we have to set the example as leaders I want you to note, Mr. Speaker, he is saying we must set the example as leaders. There are too many examples, Mr. Speaker, of members who are doing that. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Of course, then, Mr. Speaker, the member from Castry Central subsequently rose on a point of order and asked that this matter be addressed. I will not go into all the details, Mr. Speaker, of what happened after. But we met on Tuesday the 2nd, and he was asked to prove that there was validity and truth to what he said. 
The member from Castle Central presented an understanding of what took place. He went meticulously in detail to show what had happened over the years. He also showed the process that was followed for the acquisition of the land, for the valuation of the land. He compared it with what happened in the past. He indicated the process that was followed by the National Housing Corporation for the sale of the land. He clearly established that he as minister was not responsible for the sale of the land or undertook the sale. He explained to us in detail, remarkable detail. And then the member from Miku South was asked, having heard the member from Castro Central, can you indicate to us where is the corruption that you spoke of? Where is the crime in cabinet? Because you are saying as a member of this house that the honorable members around this house who are in cabinet are criminals. Because if you say there is crime in cabinet, then there are criminals there. You're saying that there is corruption. And you're saying it individually for the member from Castle Central and collectively for the members of cabinet. In this honorable house, this is a very serious statement to make. You are standing in this house where you're not even allowed to call members liars and tell members they are lying because that's not acceptable behavior in this house. I remember in this very house, I had not even said it on my feet. I whispered to a member next to me that don't mind him, he was lying. Guy was, I'm the, member from, the former member from Cast office he was lying. The speaker heard me and members objected and I was asked to withdraw. And I said, Mr. Speaker, I was not even speaking to him. And I was asked to withdraw because the speaker had heard. Even if it was off the record. And we had an exchange. And I said then, Mr. Speaker, I don't need to call somebody liar or lying. I can use other more elegant words to describe him. But since you, the speaker, have asked me to withdraw, I will respect the house, I will respect the speaker, and I, will, and I withdraw. That's how we conducted ourselves, Mr. Speaker. That's how you behave in this chamber, Mr. Speaker. So the member was asked to prove his allegation because the member from Castle Central had gone through in detail what had happened. And Mr. Speaker, I want Mr. Speaker to go through the exchange between yourself and himself, Mr. Speaker, because it's illustrative. It's illustrative of his conduct and his behavior. Because having heard the member from Castle Central, he's then asked Mr. To, to respond. Where is the corruption? So I want, Mr. Speaker, for you to bear with me as I could. And you, say, you would say to him, how does the member from Castle Central and his ministry, acting on evaluation of a certified valuer, acting on the basis of letters being written to Slasper requesting their involvement and being told that they are not interested. How does the sale for one million US translate to corruption on the part of either the member for Castle Central or the cabinet? That is what I want answered. So you're saying to him, having heard the member from Castle Central, responding to your comments previously, tell me where is the corruption? He goes on and on that it was valued in 2013 at $67 a square foot and a new valuation was done that brought it down to 47. So he's asked again, are you suggesting that there is collusion between the member for Castle Central and the valuer? Because you have to show that there is corruption. He says, Mr. Speaker, let us be very clear and honest with each other. So the Mr. Speaker then asked him, are you suggesting we are being dishonest? He says, no, I just want to bring it to the point. And he goes on, and he is going on and on and on. And the speaker asked him again as presiding officer, member, I'm hearing all what you are saying. I want to repeat my question. You are placing a reliance on the evaluation of parcel 11 that in my humble opinion is misplaced. I am asking you, there is a valuation of $3.5 million upon which the member was not even involved because nothing that you have said has shown that the, min, the me, member was involved. I saw the chairman involved. I saw the various boards involved. And you continue. The question is a very simple one. 
even assuming all what you are saying is correct, how does that translate to corruption on the part of the member personally and cabinet collectively? That is all I want answered. You are actually guiding him to focus on showing that there is corruption because that's your claim. He says, Mr. Speaker, there are many more issues that we allege that this cabinet, and again you stop him. I don't know about what other issues members are alleging. I speak with a very great degree of specificity. What is the corruption that you allege in the transaction based on what you have said? He, say, he goes on, Mr. Speaker, I am going to repeat myself. There was a valuation done in 2014 for exactly the same price, and he's going on and on. You say to him, member, you choose to ignore my question. I can only ask you to take your seat. That you shall not respond to my question, and I shall make a determination on this matter on the basis of the facts presented to me. Out of abundance of caution, and then he was leaving at that point. But then, I want you to also hear... What, how it goes on and how it concludes. The speaker says to him, the speaker says to him, what is before me is not whether land is valued at 20 million or 60 million. It is whether the transaction made in the sale of the land to a client of an attorney, whether corruption was attached to that sale. Because that's what he alleged. So you ask him, can you establish it? You have not made that case. And I ask you, I am the judge in this chamber, and I would ask you to withdraw the statement that I have read. And he says, I will not withdraw. Now, let's go over that again. You ask him as presiding officer to withdraw the statement, because in your opinion as presiding officer, he is not established that there was corruption by the honorable member and by cabinet. <coughs> and by cabinet. And you ask him to withdraw the statement that is made, and he says he will not withdraw his statement. Mr. Speaker. Of course, in keeping with standing orders 43, the House was asked to take action as such behavior by a member is not acceptable. But Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South is no stranger to misbehavior in the House. He's no stranger. And the member from... Speaker, point of order. What is the point of order? <coughs> Speaker, um, standing order 35. Um, <coughs> the, I think the member is... Um, 35? Uh, um, is discussing a matter which is in, 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 in the courts, as you indicated in your opening, opening remarks, and a member should desist from from um, divulging information that should be discussed in the court. Where, where, where in 45 does it? Well, I, I, I stood on the point of order, Mr. Speaker, because the member was, was out of, um, um, on, on, well, I could say misleading, because he was going in a direction that he should not be going at this point. Which is, which is? He was discussing a matter which is in, 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 in the courts. And where, where does the standing orders <coughs> preclude a matter before the court being, being dis discussed? I, by your very own um, words um, in previous... No, I'm asking you speaker, where in the standing you have orders... You indicated that matters before the court should not be... I have never indicated that. I said... In, in the House. I read the standing order very clearly. It says where in the opinion of the presiding officer what is being discussed may prejudice the case. I am not seeing anything you're saying there. In your opinion, you don't see that what is being discussed publicly right now, because the whole of St. Lucia is looking at this, you know. But what is he saying? But he's discussing the whole the items of the case, Mr. Speaker. The case? Proceed, oh, but member from Suzel Saltibas, the very motion before the House is about the matter. We told the court that we will allow him to come back, and I will deal with that in a while. I'm not discussing whether his claims are right or wrong. I'm not dealing with this. But the, the court, we told the court we're going to allow him back, and I will explain a little later why we told the court that. So I'm not going into the arguments, because I can speak a bit about it. I would love to. Because in his document to the courts, he quoted words I made in this house, which the transcript showed is not true. In fact, I would love him to explain to the court how he quoted me 
in an affidavit signed by him saying it's true and I never said those things in the house because the transcript of the house does not say that but that's another story so we will deal with the court case in court we're dealing with the parliament case right now so I was making the point Mr. Speaker that the member from Miku South is no stranger to misbehavior in this house and other members I'm sure will give you the details and the visuals to show you how he has misbehaved in this house, Mr. Speaker. They will show it to you. This member for Miku South has no respect for the courts. He doesn't, for, for, for the house. He doesn't have respect for the own, his own members of cabinet that he sat with, and they all know that. But of course, they're hanging on to the coattails, hoping somehow or the other they can finally, you know, we in a seat somewhere, Mr. Speaker, and I wish them well, <laughs> especially those that want to go up against the Prime Minister. But Mr. Speaker, the point is the member has misbehaved in this House over and over and over again, Mr. Speaker, refused to elect a Deputy Speaker, has flouted the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, over and over, Mr. Speaker, and I can give details upon details, Mr. Speaker, but he was Prime Minister then. So as Prime Minister, he can terrorize former Speaker Theodore John. He can terrorize Andy Daniel, openly say to them in his house, I shall not sit or I shall not withdraw. And he cannot do anything about it. And all his members know that is true. That's how he behave. And you will see the evidence later on, Mr. Speaker. That's how he behave. But he could not have been sanctioned because he, Mr. Speaker, was the Prime Minister. But he's no longer Prime Minister. And if he misbehaves in this house, there are sanctions, Mr. Speaker. There are sanctions. And he was asked, Mr. Speaker, by you to withdraw the statement. And he refused to withdraw it and showed gross disrespect to the presiding officer, Mr. Speaker. Now, Somebody might ask you the question, why did we suspend him? We suspended him to show him, Mr. Speaker, that he must respect the rules of the House. If you accuse a member, if you accuse a member, all you have been asked to do is to prove what you are saying. That's what you've been asked to do. If you see a member is corrupt, which you ought not to even say in the House, because he is bringing out the, the member you know, into disrepute, Mr. Speaker, at least you have to prove it. If you say somebody sold something, you must prove it. You must show the evidence, Mr. Speaker. I came in this house, Mr. Speaker, and I remember trying to table the contract with Don Lockerbie. I had a copy of the contract signed, Mr. Speaker, and I tried to table it, and I was prevented from tabling it to make it a document of the House. A signed contract to prove, because they were denying the Don Lockerbie arrangement. And I was going to table the contract. That's how you prove things. And I was told I'm not allowed to. And then you know what they said? It was a fake document. The DSH document, the contract, the framework agreement, we tried to table it in this House. And you'd recall the member saying, on television that it was a fake document is on social media they saw it they denied it existed we had copies and you know how it finally came that in fact they were lying was when the member from Sozel Saltiba said he signed it but he had not read it okay you didn't say that but you signed it you said you signed it but okay you didn't say you did not read it I remember you saying you did not read it but anyway let's put that aside Let's put it aside. The same document they said was a fake document. Okay, you didn't recall. That's even better. That's even better. That's even better. You should have allowed the previous comment I made by Stan. But let, let's move on. Let's move on. Honorable member. <laughs> so, okay. But the point I was making is not even that, honorable member. The point I was making, the point I was making is how we came into this house and when we made a claim, we proved it. If we could not prove it, we kept quiet, Mr. Speaker. When we stood up in this house and we spoke about the Wasco dam scandal, I had all the documents 
to show, and the member from Castries East had all the documents to show what had happened in the selection of the contractor and everything else, we were prevented from making that document at the House. But they, they have a reason why they do that, because they don't want the House to record the acts that they did, Mr. Speaker. So we have come to this House, we've made claims, and on every instance we've proved it. Why can't you prove it? Why can't you prove it? And you've been asked over and over to withdraw, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the House has the capacity to discipline members. It has the capacity. When members disregard the rules of the House, the House can discipline them. And the House has shown that it is willing to act when necessary. It's not its first inclination. Members are called upon to withdraw. Honorable member, you, can you withdraw? Honorable member, that's, that's the first inclination of the House. But he doesn't listen to that. He doesn't, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, we did not suspend him because of any malice or pettiness. We did not. And I want to go back to my comments shortly after that incident. Shortly after that incident, Mr. Speaker. I want to go to the comments I made at the start of my presentation on the budget statement. Right after it happened. Immediately after it happened, Mr. Speaker, I want to read my comments for you, Mr. Speaker, and I shall proceed. Mr. Speaker, before I proceed, Mr. Speaker, with the substance of my contribution, I think we need to just reflect for a few moments on what transpired earlier today as it relates to the member for Miku South. I think, Mr. Speaker, for those who are watching, and certainly for us in this honorable chamber, it was very disconcerting, the behavior of the member for Miku South and the attitude that he showed towards this honorable house. It is never our intent, Mr. Speaker, to disenfranchise any member, or for that purpose, to disenfranchise any constituency that elected a member to sit here to represent them. But I think we needed to get across to the honorable member that in this honorable house, there is a code of con conduct. There is a manner in which you ought to behave, and there are respects, and that there are conventions and other accepted practices in this honorable house. I have been asked before to withdraw statements that I was convinced I did not have any reason to withdraw. I have been asked, Mr. Speaker, during my five years in opposition to express my apologies for what I, have, I would have said because another member would have felt offended. Even if I felt I was right, when the Speaker asked me to, I acceded, Mr. Speaker. I never showed disrespect, even when I believe I was right. And our actions today is to show to the Honorable Member, not that any one of us in particular, but as a collective, this chamber, this institution that we are part of, ask that he shows respect and regard for it. I have no desire, Mr. Speaker, to see that the Honorable Member does not participate in future deliberations. I want to repeat it. I have no desire, Mr. Speaker, to see that the Honorable Member does not participate in future deliberations. Mr. Speaker, I suspect it will be up to you to engage him on moving forward. But he has to accept that this House demands from him a more civilized conduct in this Honorable Chamber. And that, Mr. Speaker, I want to put on record as the intent of the decision we took. That's why we did it. I hope the Honorable Member recognizes that he ought to be in this House as elected by the people to represent them. He may remain arrogant, he may remain very haughty, and he may believe that he has no reason to show any respect to the Chamber. That is for him to decide. But we want the Honorable Member to understand that there is a particular way you ought to behave in this Honorable House. And Mr. Speaker, I trust, like I said, you will engage him and ensure that we can move forward because our ultimate aim is that everyone who is elected by the people should be in this house representing them. And I said that, I said that minutes after he was suspended. Minutes after. That was my statement, Mr. Speaker, because we want him in this house, Mr. Speaker. So after all of this, what has happened? What did he do? What did he do? The first thing he tried to do was to get public support for what he called his democratic rights. And today, they apply to the police for a walk for democracy. Not a walk for health, 
not a walk for healthy lifestyles, not a, how you call it, move in St. Lucia, you know, he wants a walk for democracy. Now, we all know there's a lot of semantics, a walk, a run, a march, say, member Gaila. But Mr. Speaker, I want you to reflect on this honorable member. He says his democratic rights have been infringed. He wants the public to support him for his actions. Mr. Speaker, what actions? To be disrespectful in the House? Because that's what it's about. That's what he wants the public to support him, to stand in the House and accuse members. And when asked to prove what you are saying, he doesn't do it. He disrespects the chair. And like a, a, a very naughty child, when a parent tries to discipline him, throws a tantrum. So he wants the public to support him in that behavior. The same person who misbehaved for so many years when he was prime minister. But all of a sudden, he's no longer prime minister. So he has to account for his actions. So he now wants the public to support him. And he says it's his democratic rights, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, democratic rights? You can hear outside, Mr. Speaker, the crowd chanting. When we all came in, he had his supporters outside. You, you recall a few years ago when he was prime minister, this, this parliament was barricaded. St. Lucians were not allowed to come within 100 meters of parliament. Barricade. Stay away. What you see outside, Mr. Speaker, is democracy at work. This is democracy. This is democracy. No member in here have, has any fear of the people supporting the United Workers' Party being outside expressing their views. We have no fear. We will allow them every single day to be outside expressing their views. No fear. And you know why? Because they are in the minority, Mr. Speaker. They, they do not speak for St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. But you know what's even more interesting for me? They're not marching and demonstrating for help for the poor. They're not marching and demonstrating because the economy is not working. They're not marching and demonstrating because there was no economic growth. <laughs> They're not marching and demonstrating because there was no help for housing. They're not marching because there were no laptops for the children. They were not demonstrating because there was jazz in Marsha. They're not. All the bread and butter issues, they're not demonstrating because there's no need to demonstrate. There's no need to demonstrate. So they are demonstrating, they say, for their democratic rights. But they are outside in Parliament Yard expressing their views, and you swear is the booth of democracy in the Greek city state of Athens. When Plato and Aristotle and all of them encourage the people to speak up, speak up, speak up, and express your views, the booth, the booth of democracy. Mr. Speaker, that's what's happening outside democracy. The same member who led a government that closed down Radio St. Lucia, the national radio station, because they said there are too many SLP hacks working there. Same. The same. I mean, I can go on and on and talk about the violations of democracy. You know, Mr. Speaker, I had to go through an experience with the last government, and they claim all kinds of things against me. But the one that really shocked me, and I've not really said it in public, and somebody reminded me of it this morning. Albert Fridges worked in the High Commission together with me. So they wanted to interview him to find out what may have happened in the High Commission. And the two police officers who were investigating told him to come for the interview. And he asked where. They said at Prime Minister's residence. And the lawyer said, what? This is supposed, assuming it's an investigation as legitimate, why do we have to go to Prime Minister's residence to be, for him to be interviewed, and he never went. But the point I'm making, democracy. You have a claim or an interest in the actions of somebody, 
but the interviews being done by the investigators, they are located in the Prime Minister's residence. Think about that, people. Think about that. When you talk about democracy, the politicization of investigations against your enemies, remember the <coughs> Watergate scandal? Remember that? Talk about democracy. We will always allow the people to speak up, Mr. Speaker, to say, Mr. Speaker. But you know what I found even most interesting member from Srozel Saltibus? This is a member from Miku South says, this is a seminal case that he is taking against the state. And he needs a fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> but earlier on, he had said, I can take care of myself. I can take care of myself. It's, it's not for me. It's for the people. And then he says he needs a fundraiser. But he doesn't have money to pay for the case, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, his second action is to file a case in the courts. Now, Mr. Speaker, I'm not going to go into the details because obviously it's a matter before the courts, Mr. Speaker. But we need to say what's in the public domain. So I'm not going to go into all the details of the case, Mr. Speaker. But I want you to reflect, Mr. Speaker, on the seriousness of what the Honorable Member has done. The Honorable Member has says, says that the standing orders are unconstitutional. They are unlawful. And therefore, by suspending him, they violated his rights as a citizen. Now, if the standing orders are unconstitutional and illegal, and Mr. Speaker, I mean, I know you won't allow me, but I could have actually quoted from the document, Mr. Speaker, that he filed. It means the standing orders that we've had since independence, that was inherited from time we were a colony and an associated state, the, that John Compton, Henry G. Rody, Evans Cauldron, Mr. Speaker, um, Alan Luizzi, George Mallet, those standing orders that were negotiated and put together by the chamber before the chambers before us, Mr. Speaker. It means speakers like St. Clair Daniel and Matthew Roberts and husbands and all of them, all of them have been engaging in an illegal act. Think about that, Mr. Speaker. Think about it. That by suspending him, this that's an unconstitutional act. It's illegal. It means the very foundation upon which we are in this house is illegal. It means the processes that we pass, the laws, may have been illegal. Tell me, Mr. Speaker, of course he's trying to refer specifically to the issue of suspension. Maybe he's going to argue before the courts. It's not all the standing orders, but it's just the one that they use against me that's illegal. I'm not discussing the details of the case. You ask me not to. So if you want me to go into a legal analysis, I will call on more learned people to do so. But I'm telling you, if the Constitution says there shall be a parliament, and the parliament shall regulate its own conduct and its rules, the parliament is not, the standing orders are not unreasonable. The standing orders are not asking you to go and commit suicide or to go and take a life or to go and seize property. The standing orders is about the conduct of the business of parliament. How, how does it become, uh, but anyway, I'll leave that for the courts to decide, Mr. Speaker. You know, so Mr. Speaker, the honorable member, Mr. Speaker, goes to the courts. And in, a, in addition to saying that what we, the standing orders are illegal and constitutional, he says to the courts, place an injunction on the House. Until this matter is decided in the courts, ask them to take me back in. Listen to that. Put an injunction on the House, and until this matter is decided, to take me back in. But we want you back in. <laughs> but we want you back in. I read my comments I made minutes after we suspended him, where I said we want him in the chamber. We don't want you out. So we told the court, there's no need for a hearing on injunction. If he wants to go to court to decide whether this house standing orders are unconstitutional or not, let him go. 
We want him in the house. He has to answer about the Urunura International Airport Redevelopment Project. He has to answer about St. Jude's. He has to answer about the Rodney Bay roundabouts. He has to answer about the Wasco Dam. So John Compton Dam. He has to answer about the Padua letter. He has to answer about the vaccines. There's a lot for him to answer. And if he's not in this house, he cannot answer. The lands are show, we just start in. I can give him the list, Mr. Speaker. He has to be in this house. He has the privileges committee to attend. He has, if he's not a member, he cannot attend. We want him in the house. So we told the court, there is no issue. We, we don't need no injunction. We don't want anything, Mr. Speaker. Let him, well, I'm not even going into whether the court would have granted it or would not have granted it. I, I don't even want to. That's for the lawyers to decide. We know we want him in the house. We want him here. And the courts will decide if what we did was legal or not, or whether he's supposed to apologize or not. And then I want him to now say the courts are unconstitutional. I want him to have another fundraiser to say the courts are illegal. That's what I want him to do, because we want him inside here. Because if you're going to accuse people of being corrupt, and why are they corrupt is because the valuation of the land changed. So what happened to DSH and a thousand acres at a dollar an acre? Was there, was there corruption? Honorable member, was there corruption? Was there corruption? The lands up north that a developer, that NIC was about to buy, NIC was told don't buy it, give the money instead to a private developer to buy it. Was that, was that corruption? Was that corruption? Can you think about that? Somebody is arguing to move the valuation from seven million to three and a half million is corruption and they are criminals. But then you, the lands that were going to be bought by NSC for the people of St. Lucia, they were instructed not to buy, take the same money, give to a private developer from outside St. Lucia to buy the lands. And, and that's not corruption too? DSH is not corruption too? I'm not saying it is. But if that's your yardstick for measuring corruption, you have a lot of acts of corruption to answer. A lot. But I will not accuse you or any member of corruption because I don't know the details. I don't know it. But that is how this party operates. That's how this party operates, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the courts will decide, and the courts will make a final determination, and will respect the decision of the courts. If the courts rule, Mr. Speaker, that what we did was unconstitutional, what we did was unlawful, then we were wrong. But we know we followed standing orders that were established and enacted in this honorable house. We followed it. And if the court said it was unconstitutional, then we'll have to correct it. But if the courts find we were right, the honorable member will have to account for his actions. At least the House will then decide what happens next. But we want the honorable member in this House. And I support this motion that I've presented because we want him to be back in the House, Mr. Speaker. We want him to be back. Mr. Speaker, one final point I want to make. The Honorable Member says in his filing in the courts that he was never given a chance to withdraw and apologize. What? Mr. Speaker, never. And I read the transcript where he was asked by the presiding officer to withdraw and he said he shall not. And I'm putting it before this house and for the record that the member still has an opportunity to withdraw his comments and apologize. Because if you go into the courts to say they treated you wrongfully, they never ask you to apologize and they just suspend you, you have been given another opportunity when you have been allowed back in this house. Of course, we have items on the agenda, that, on the other paper that he has to stick to. But I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, you will give him a minute for him to apologize and withdraw his statement. Because we are not denying him an opportunity for him to withdraw and for him to apologize. Because it's disingenuous to say you were suspended without giving you a chance 
to withdraw and apologize because the transcripts show where you were asked and you said, I will not. And then you were told, you will stay out until you apologize and withdraw. So Mr. Speaker, this motion is fulfilling a promise we made to the court that we will allow him to come back in. Let the court decide what the matter is. No drama, no drama. We want you in here. We want you to keep the member from Shrozel company. He gets lonely when you're not there. So for fear that he might lose his way in this house, we want him to be here with you, honorable member. So we want him back in this house. So honorable members, I present to you this motion to approve this motion and to allow the member from Miku South to come back to this house to account for his actions, for him as the rightful role of leader of the opposition to hold this government to account. But he, learn, he will learn, Mr. Speaker, there are rules, there are conventions, there are practices, there is decorum, there is dignity that one must display when they conduct themselves in this house. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.